classic lichen tana pilaris affects, of course, the scalp, but it may also affect the beard area in 22% of men, the eyebrows and the eyelashes, and the body hair. But not the hair loss is the main complaint of the patients with lichen plana pilaris. The main complaint is the presence of itch, burning, and pain. And, of course, we use trichoscopy. And in trichoscopy, the perifollicular scaling is probably the most important feature in trichoscopy of lichen plana pilaris. However, there may be a perifollicular accentuation of scaling also in other diseases, especially in polarized dermoscopes. We may see some scaling which looks like perifollicular scaling. So this is not sufficient to find this feature. We look for other features of the lichen plana pilaris in trichoscopy. They include the loss of follicular units, uh, the perifollicular erythema, and also some other features include the tubular scaling. The tubular scaling means that there are scales which entangle the hair shaft as it grows, and then as the hair shaft is growing, then at one moment it will detach, and this is how the hair casts will develop. Furthermore, we will have some lonely hairs similar to frontal fibrous and calopecia and some dystrophic hairs as in other diseases associated with cicatricial alopecia. And finally, as in all for diseases that uh, are associated with scarring of recent onset milky red areas. There may be also bluish peripheral lesions. Uh, they're mainly found in patients with darker skin phototypes. So this is the summary of the features in trichoscopy of lichen pilaris. Uh, on the left side, there are the most specific features, and on the right side, there are the features which are common for all cicatricial alopecias. So from there, once we made the diagnosis, we go to treatment, and I will start with the classic method of uh, treatment. And a few years ago, there were two very nice publications about the efficacy of different types of treatment in lichen pilaris. And here you see the numbers with cyclosporin and, me and methotrexate being uh, best rated in regards to efficacy. The typical doses used in literature data uh, in lichen pilaris are on this slide. And now, more recently, there was an article and the authors have suggested an algorithm for the treatment of a lichen plana pilaris. They suggest to start with a combination of three medications, first clobetazole, second hydroxychloroquine, and three n acetylcysteine. Well, n acetylcysteine may be a little bit surprising because this is quite new. There's a study which shows that n acetylcysteine significantly decreases the LPPAI in patients with LPP. Now, I have a problem with studies which do not do any other evaluation of lichen plana pilaris than just the LPPAI, because uh, the LPPAI is composed mainly of itch, pain, burning, and so on. So we can get rid of the symptoms, but it doesn't mean it stops the progression of the disease. So if we use some anti-itch treatment, we will get an, an effect in LPPAI within a few days, but still it does not stop the progression. So I think uh, we will be all interested to see how n acetylcysteine is doing in regards to possible stopping of the progression of the disease. According to the authors, the second-line treatment should be cyclosporin or methotrexate, and of course, with folic acid. And now we would ask ourselves about the more modern ways of treatment. And here we have only case reports or almost only case reports. And we have case reports with almost all available uh, oral JAK inhibitors that are available in dermatology. Uh, there are also some case reports and case series describing the topical JAK inhibitors and also some studies on biological drugs like ixekizumab and tildrakizumab. And uh, there is only one clinical trial, phase two clinical trial with brepocitinib. This is, a, a, this is a drug which is not available on the market or not available yet. Here, the LPPAI decreased by 80%, so the numbers look good. If the effect is um, confirmed in phase three trial, I think maybe this will be the first indication approved for lichen plana pilaris. And there's a one other study I would like to mention. It was performed in patients with frontal fibrosis and calopecia with a topical JAK inhibitor 
And because I always uh, like to bring you the uh, very newest news, I will share with you information from the AD. Mariana Sena mentioned that linalol may be a cofactor in LPP. So I checked in Google, it said linalol may be found in plants. It has a pleasant scent and it is used in cosmetics and food. So after discussing with Mariana, I thought I'd check the ingredients of some shampoos and indeed many shampoos do contain uh, linalol. I think the data are not sufficient to recommend to our patients to avoid linalol in shampoos. However, uh, I thought it is interesting and maybe we have more data on this next year. And another information, it's about metformin that may have a beneficial effect on lichen panopilaris. And again, these are preliminary data. We will see what happens next. So this was about classic form of lichen planopilaris. You are not yet in Warsaw, Poland. Please come for the European Hair Research Society meeting. We will have a lot of trichoscopy and lots of uh, pharmacotherapy. Thank you.